Hello, this is Eitan Shalom. I'm doing a sort of quick, spontaneous uh, lunchtime video. Uh, I wanted to talk about okra, uh, specifically Indian okra. And uh, this is the okra dish that I made. And it is a really simple dish that I learned from my friend Mrs. Medney in Chicago many years ago. And um, I see I have the camera upside down. Okay. Anyway, um, it's a very simple dish. It's sautéed onions to which, so here's the, here's the recipe. You saute uh, thinly sliced brown or white onions in uh, an oil of your choice. I prefer, um, I prefer sesame oil. Um, and so I saute the onions in sesame oil. And as they're starting to brown, um, uh, and you can see that in the end, they're really f very sautéed, so they're quite brown, even a little bit burnt in spots, which is the right way to do it, uh, the way uh, Indians do the onions for a dish called biryani also. And so as the onions are sautéing, after they're halfway cooked, then you add cumin seed. And, um, you know, don't go overboard with the cumin seed. This was a whole large onion and probably two to three cups of okra, and probably about a teaspoon of cumin seed. And then as the onions are browning further, um, then you add the okra. And now, uh, uh, you'll, the key to not having your okra come out slimy is that when you wash the okra, allow it to dry before cooking. So wash it beforehand so that it dries out, so that it's not fresh off the washing. There's no water added to this dish. Um, and or maybe a tiny bit, depending on the day, depending on the humidity, depending on a lot of variables. So then you add the okra. So you've sautéed the onions, you've added the cumin, there's some salt in it, and now you add the okra, and you keep cooking the okra. The okra, the okra is cooked when the ends, the tips, start to open up like that. And you can see that this okra is really tender and soft. This is even a big piece. The bigger, the bigger the okra, often the less tender. Um, but I'm going to talk about that in a second. These I just got at the Indian market two days ago, and they were very soft. Um, so then you, you cook the okra until it's 98% cooked, and then you add um, turmeric. And I would say I probably added a teaspoon, no, three-quarters of a teaspoon of turmeric, and also an equivalent amount of black pepper freshly ground black pepper. And then you just cook it uh, in, in, cook it for a little longer on a lower heat now so that you don't burn the turmeric. It's very easy to burn turmeric powder when you're using it in a fry dish. So you add turmeric at the end and you lower the heat and you just keep stirring it long enough for the turmeric to get absorbed into the onion and okra. You'll see that telltale turmeric stain on the on the what do you call this thing, on the bowl, that's because it's been well absorbed into the oil. And now my magic ingredient that Mrs. Medi did not use is pomegranate molasses. I've written about pomegranate molasses on my website. Um, I use, and it's also elsewhere on my blog, uh, on the videos, um, I use Cortas brand pomegranate molasses. Um, and that gives a beautiful astringent, sour, sweet finish to the dish that's very nice. And uh, Mrs. Medi would sometimes uh, garnish this with some fresh cilantro. Now let's talk um, just quickly about how to choose good okra. When you go to the market and they have okra for sale, press on the okra, just like I'm pressing on this cooked one. It should not be hard at all. It should give. It should be very nice and soft. If it's not nice and soft, it's not going to be it's not going to be a good okra for cooking unless you're making gumbo or something where you slice it and there's so many other things. But um, in the dish, but uh, okra to be a, a nice, delicious Indian style dish, you want it to be tender. And it, so when you when you see your okra, and frankly, I rarely see okra for sale anywhere but the Indian market where it's tender. Sometimes at the uh, uh, Middle Eastern market, it will be tender as well. So if you press on the okra and it feels like uh, the, the finger of an old uh, uh, skinny person 
that's not, or a twig, that's not gonna, what you want. You're looking for the okra that feels like a tender uh, finger, as it were. You know, the, the British name for okra is ladies' fingers. Um, and, uh, we would consider that as uh, probably a sexist term now, uh, but the lady, uh, the ladies' fingers that you have in mind is somebody young where the fingers are soft. So um, uh, we call it okra in England. They call it lady in India. They call it ladies' finger if they don't call it by the Indian name, which is bindi. And this is a bindi masala. If you were using the Hindi term, uh, in Tamil. Trying to remember, Vendikai, I think it's Vendikai, I'm pretty sure it's Vendikai. So this is a really simple dish, and Mrs. Mehdi used to make it uh, for, I was vegetarian, so she made it like this for me. Um, if you're a meat eater, you can put a little bit of ground lamb uh, in with it, and that's very nice. Ground lamb uh, would go very well in this dish. Okay, that's Mrs. Mehdi's very simple bindi masala that I've cooked with uh um, brown rice from Kerala. Um, you'll see that the rice is not long grain. It's not basmati. Basmati, it's very short grain rice, which is the kind of rice they have in Kerala and Sri Lanka. And it is uh, only partially um, polished. So it's still got some of the bran. Okay, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.